Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Pastor Ryan Radke, and I am coming to you from Messiah Lutheran Church in Mechanicsville, Virginia. Actually, I'm coming to you from my front porch today, but, you know, I think you get it. Uh, this is our last of 16 in our series called Let's Try Praying Like This. We've been using this book, Soul Types, as an inspiration. It's by Sandra Krebs Hirsch and Jane A. G. Kyes. And it, it took the Myers-Briggs Personality Inventory uh, Indicator, whatever it's called, whatever the I is, and um, it used it to talk about different types of spiritual paths, spiritual practices, different kinds of, of praying and relating to God. Because each of us is created uniquely, as all these different personality things and Enneagrams and all of that describe, um, all of us are a little bit different. Um, and that's a good thing. That's what makes the body of Christ diverse and rich and function. Um, but that means also that each of us needs to find the best way that works for us in terms of our relationship with God and, and that path of discovery and self-discovery of, of knowing yourself well enough and, and trying things trying things that stretch you that you say, this doesn't work for me, but I learned from it and finding those things that really do work for you. Um, it's that, that process of exploration and trying things that we've been trying to uh, guide you through with this uh, buffet of prayer styles. Uh, this last one is called laying on of hands. Now this one, you know, this, this was all put together uh, a long time ago, well before a pandemic. So this is a little tricky in the time of COVID. But hopefully within your home, within your family, within your safe uh, pandemic bubble, you have somebody you can try this with. Uh, this one is a very personal uh, kind of prayer. And um, it might not be the most comfortable for everybody, but it is a very powerful style of prayer. Maybe it's not the one you use all the time, but in certain occasions, you'll, you'll understand. What is this like, laying on of hands prayer? Well, it's like... It's praying for somebody else, and the someone else is there with you. It's like making a real connection with the person you're praying for. It's like a physical blessing by making contact with another child of God and praying for them. It's like an immediate connection of Christian love, both between you and your Christian brother or sister, and between each of you and God. And what's it for? It's for showing someone else God's love. It's for showing someone else your attention, your time, your care. It's for making a prayer real and personal, up close. It's for strengthening the ligaments of the body of Christ. It's for touching someone's life, physically and spiritually, and feeling blessed in return. It's really for making the world a better place, all of these different kind of prayers. Are, are to do that. And when could you use this? Well, you could use it anytime there's another human being with you and who could benefit from your prayer and touch, which really is anytime. But, you know, keep in mind in COVID safety restrictions, common sense, and, you know, make sure you talk to them first before you just start grabbing on and praying. That's, that's helpful. More on that in a second. Uh, where could you use it? Kind of the same. You could use this wherever there's another human being with you who could benefit from your prayer and touch. Um, could be private, could be public, um, depends on the situation. Uh, keep in mind, again, all COVID safety restrictions and common sense. How does this work? Well, uh, basically you got four steps. First, talk to somebody. Before you pray or anything else, talk to somebody. And you should actually do way more listening than talking. Uh, it could be brief or not, uh, a one-time conversation. Or it could be a series of conversations over a number of years, some period of time. Second, you should ask if it's okay to pray with them. Not everybody is ready for that or wants you to just start praying over them. And prayer is a, a personal thing, so ask first. Third, you know, if you ask, you know, you should ask if it'd be okay for you to make physical contact. Now, you probably wouldn't say it exactly like that. Excuse me. May I make physical contact with you while I pray? That, that's kind of awkward. Um, but it could be something like, may I hold your hand while we pray? Um, maybe you could put a hand on their shoulder or uh, a hand on their heads if you've ever been to a confirmation ceremony or maybe a wedding where there was that type of laying on of hands, that kind of blessing. Um, the touch must be appropriate. I can't stress that enough. It must be uh, permission given, must be appropriate, 
must be okay. Um, the person has to give permission. Um, and it could be right when you ask, is it okay if I hold your hand while we pray? Sure. Um, or maybe it's a family member or a friend that you that you know well and that you trust. And maybe that kind of touch has already been established as a part of your relationship. Okay, it still doesn't hurt to ask. Um, fourth and finally, then pray for them. So first you talk, listen. Second, you um, ask if it'd be okay to pray. Right on the heels of that, number three, is it all right if I hold your hand, place a hand on your shoulder, something? And then you pray and you pray out loud. That's important. I know that's not in everybody's wheelhouse or comfort zone, but that's part of this, this contact, this um, connection that you're making through laying on a fan's prayer. Um, pray out loud. And you, you pray for the things that you've been talking about. You, you take what you've been hearing from them, what's on their mind, what's in their heart, and that's what you use as the content of the prayer. If you don't know what to say, then just remember the basics. Things like giving thanks, asking for help, saying sorry, whatever the situation requires. There's of course the, the very basic, God, help me, help me, help me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But I'd go a little farther than that. Um, I want you to try this if you can. I mean, if you don't have anybody around that you can do this with, then figure out a way to do it over Zoom where you still have that personal time, that connection. There is something about that physical touch that makes this different. Um, but if that's not a possibility because of COVID or just because that's not the relationship you have with the person you're praying for, then then don't do that. But um, approach somebody. Um, could be somebody you know well, maybe not so well. Maybe it's just somebody that's been in your heart, somebody that whose story or whose needs, uh, whose circumstances are in your prayers already or that you've been thinking about. I'll explain that you'd like to pray with them. Talk to them first. I'll ask them to tell you what's going on in their life and what they'd like you to pray about. That never hurts either. What would you like me to pray about? That's pretty direct. Um, two, once you've listened, you have an idea about what to pray about, ask something like, hey, would it be okay if I said a prayer with you now? And then three, in much the same breath, ask something like, would it be okay if I held your hand, or touched your shoulder, whatever, while we pray? And then number four, pray. Um, thank them for letting them pray for them. And they might thank you too. And then continue on with your day, either with or without your prayer partner. It depends on who they are. But make sure to reflect on this experience, either by yourself or with others. What did it, what did it feel like to do this? And then the next step, honestly, would be to have someone pray via a laying on of hands for you so that you're not just giving it, but also receiving it. This is a prayer that is sometimes even more powerful to be on the receiving end of than to be the one offering it up. I know that's been the case for me. Take a moment to talk about what you thought of it. And then remember this goal, that this would be what I hope you'd learn from this. This is my learning goal for you, trying this prayer. And when I say learning, I don't just mean up here. I mean, you know, the prayer isn't just for the person praying. It's fundamentally for the life of the world and for the good of others. Your prayers are not just a wish list to God or cosmic vending machine. Um, it doesn't matter if you're an introvert or an extrovert, if it's going to make you tired to pray with somebody else or if it's going to feel okay. Um, our Savior became incarnate. And our prayers must be incarnate and tangible sometimes too. Maybe not always with the touch of a hand but in the acts of service as we tried that one before or in the things that we make or in the conversations we have. Prayer is tangible. Um, but your prayers aren't just for yourself. It's for your relationship with God, yes, but it's, it's for the love of the world. And that's what you're praying about and that's how you can be an answer to your prayers. That concludes this sampler platter of prayer. There was a lot more ideas in this book if you want to check it out sometime. Um, chapters and chapters, lots of different things of spiritual practices and styles of prayer. Um, this was just the sampling that, that seemed the most accessible, but you can read through it. It has a whole course of try the one that's most like you, try the one that's maybe one step away, 
try the one that's the exact opposite of your personality type and learn from that. It's got a whole kind of thing. You don't have to read every single page. You can kind of go through based on um, your personality type. And way back at the beginning of this uh, series, we had a little survey of um, a little miniature version of the Myers-Briggs inventory. So I'll, I'll attach that one to this video again, one tab over with the, the guide to this just to take it again and uh, just give it a try, see where you're at. Uh, lastly, a little plug for what's coming next. The next three Wednesdays, so that's February 3rd, 10th, and 17th, and I, I realize the 17th is Ash Wednesday, but we're going to squeeze this in. There's a really nice um, curriculum from Augsburg Fortress, our, our denomination's publishing house. Came out a long time ago-ish now. Doesn't feel that long to me, but I guess it has been. Uh, but it's called Rediscovering the Book of Faith. And it includes these really beautiful um, videos, um, good discussion questions, but it walks through how we have the scriptures that we have today, how the canon came to be set, Old Testament and New Testament, um, how, how what we turn to today came into being in its present form. Uh, the third session is on the Reformation's impact on our scriptures, on the Bible. Um, but it's a, a three-week session. We're going to do it on Zoom. So I won't be able to do these live videos with you in the same way because of the videos, because of some of the copyrighted materials. Um, so we'll have a Zoom um, Bible study for the next three Wednesdays. Just try it out. Good, good short session to give it a try. Um, but I will record one of these as a summary each week just so you get a gist if you can't be on it. But you don't need a, a Zoom membership or account. Um, the invitation will go out each week beforehand, and it'll be 10 o'clock the next three Wednesdays, the 3rd, the 10th, and the 17th of February. So I uh, hope you can join us for that. We want to give it a try. I know some folks in the congregation are doing Zoom anyway, and some have been involved in Zoom Bible studies, but this will be the first kind of official one, uh, from me at least. So uh, we're going to give it a try. Uh, so I think that's it. Thank you for hanging with me through this long series on prayer. Uh, we started last fall, took a break for Advent and wrapped it up this month, but um, it's good to try these things. It's good to, um, to pray with God in a number of ways because God's gonna hear you and answer you um, no matter what. But I think it'll be better for you, for me, if we find those avenues of prayer um, that make the travels, that make the road the smoothest. So again, thank you. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for following through all of this. And um, let me know how it goes. Let me know which of these things worked for you or if you have others we didn't talk about, but uh, I'd be curious to hear them. Drop me a line, give me a call. Uh, take care. We'll see you next time.